So Node.js have patched a recent vulnerability with regard to HTTP request smuggling in all of its releases. How critical is this? Let's discuss. So if you're using Node.js, you might have noticed a tweet or a notification that the Node.js team have published their February 2020 security patches and releases. They often do this very regularly. And one critical security patch that caught my attention was this. HTTP request smuggling using Malfor transform transfer encoding header. And it's labeled as critical. It was reported by a software engineer called Ethan on eBay. And uh, I want to take some time just to discuss this attack and uh, see the ramification of this attack and how bad really it is, right? And what is HTTP smuggling? So let's start with that, right? So the HTTP request smuggling have been discovered in 2005 and it essentially in a nutshell, the ability for an attacker to smuggle a request that that would have been otherwise blocked by a certain web server or a proxy. And usually this attack happens most of the time, almost 99% with proxies, right? With reverse proxies to be to be specific, right? With front-end proxies that receives thing and then filter maybe the content says, hey, you cannot go to this side, you, your IP is blocked or... For example, you uh, that particular request should go to this backend, and that particular request should go to the ba this backend. Or if you're you're from this country, go to this backend. If you're from this country, go to this backend. So that's basically what reverse proxy. And we made a lot of videos on uh, on, on on proxies and load balancers. I'm going to reference it here for you guys to to check them out. But a smuggling attack can happen when specifically in a layer seven reverse proxy. So one of the pro proxies features is the idea of multiplexing or, or pooling or sharing the TCP connection on the back end. So how does that work? So if I'm an attacker, who want to make a request to the reverse proxy. That's a TCP connection between me as a client and the reverse proxy, right? But the reverse proxy, on the other hand, because it's a TLS termination and it terminates the TCP connection, right? It doesn't have to be TLS. It established an establish a TCP connection between itself, now it's the client, and the backend web server. It could be Node.js and it could be other web servers, right? And then for performance and efficiency, it starts pooling these connections. So multiple requests that is coming to the can you see this? Yeah. yeah. That's like Poseidon's. <laughs> spear right so multiple requests that comes to the reverse proxy can actually getting pulled into one tcp connection at the back end or money many depends on the configuration of the back end right and we made we talked about that in, in a layer 7 proxy in this channel what's the problem with this you say say who's saying what's the problem with this it's all in the back end it's 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 better right but here's the thing with http 1 1 in particular how do you determine the start of a request and the end of the request? And I was baffled by this, right? It does a string parsing, guys. It just does a string parsing. It says, hey, okay, this is the start of a headers. Where should I end my headers? Oh, there's a content length. Oh, content length is 20 length. So anything after that is essentially my content. That's the end of the request, all right? And af anything after that is essentially the request the, the next request right so that's that's how it does so everything has to be lined perfectly for the request to actually work and how this is how http request smuggling works right it plays on this i'm not going to go in details it plays on this content transfer encoding header and the content length header to kind of trick the web server and the proxy to essentially chop the request in a in in an 
an ununiform way so that the attacker can sneak in extra content that is essentially plays as another request. So he sneak is like instead of doing the body, he will or she will do another get request that is essentially going to the legitimate admin content that the attacker is not supposed to see, right? So he's gonna sneak in that attack and you can do so much bad stuff with it. And this could happen because of the a bad protocol negotiation between the proxy, which is the front end in this case, and the, the, the web server, which is not JS, right? And if they don't talk the same language, if they don't agree on where the request begins and ends, bad thing ha happens, request can be smuggled, and the cache could be poisoned, right? And if you cache the request poisoned, like you can essentially, the attacker can do a phishing attack on the client itself, right? So like if you go to Bank of America, they can sneak in their content and force the proxy to cache the false Bank of America website and the client essentially will get the attacker's Bank of America phishing website, which leads to bad stuff. So one point I forgot to mention is, what protocols are affected as a result of this, okay? And you can see very clearly that HTTP1 will be affected because in HTTP1, we rely on string manipulation, string parsing to determine the, pro the request beginning and an end. In HTTP2, what we do essentially is we, the client is responsible of telling us all its headers, right? And it will tag it with a stream ID, right? That's why the building a HTTP2 client is very complex because it's responsible to do all that stuff. So it will say, okay, the start of the headers are this, and this is the end of the headers. And it will be its own stream. It's not gonna be mumbled with other stuff. So the back end, which is in this case, the front end proxy, will know that, oh, this is a header. This is a header, this is a header. So, and it will pick that up and God hope that your backend is also HTTP2 because HTTP1, it's useless, right? The whole thing is useless, okay? It has to be the backend, which is when in this case, the front end proxy talking to Node.js has to be also HTTP2 because if it's not, then you, you're in the same trap, essentially. It's the same bug, right? So the front end HTTP2 between the client and the server is not enough. Has the whole thing will be all the way to the server, to the Node.js server should be HTTP2. That means you have to have a certificate in the Node.js, you have to use an HTTP2 server on your Node.js, you have to use an HTTP2 client on your proxy that talks to your Node.js, right? So that's whole chain has to be HTTP2 for this not to happen to you. So that's one. The other thing is that this will essentially, I'm not gonna say never, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 95.6 sure. I don't know why I came up with that number. Is when you are using a layer seven proxy, which terminates your TLS, which terminates your TCP connection, and it is to you as a client, it's your final destination, then this will happen. Because a layer seven proxy by definition is gonna pull the connections in the back end. I like to use the word multiplex because it is kind of multiplexing, but different requests, right? It's not a single request multiplexing, right? It's not a single client multiplexing. It's a, it's a multiple clients multiplexing into a one single TCP connection. That's what the layer seven proxy does, right? And then and that just uses that to limit the connection and all that jazz, right? And does caching and uh, efficient request uh, handling, all that jazz. But... A layer four proxy will not be affected by this. And ask me why? Because a layer four proxy is merely streaming everything without looking at the data. And that's important because it's not looking at the data. And we talked about layer seven and layer four. I'm gonna reference it here, guys. It just streams everything to the back end, right? That's what's happening here. And if it does, then it doesn't really look at the content header or content link. It leaves everything to the Node.js or, or whatever your web server is. 
okay it just streams everything there and th this is one thing and the other thing it never shares connections because it i'm not sure about that but i am gonna say 96 per percent is not gonna share the connection because and here's why if I am establishing a connection between the client and a layer four proxy, I'm going to build a NAT table. That's one implementation, by the way. I'm going to build a NAT table that says, okay, this IP address goes to this IP address on the back end. And that's it, right? So every request goes to this. So I'm going to establish a specific TCP connection just for that client, okay? And it just will gonna stream things thing. And it, things go really bad if you don't do that. Okay, if you share connection on the back end, which I'm pretty sure we don't in layer 4 proxy, then things can go really bad. And we do not want this, son. Right? So that's the problem here. Okay? So with layer 4 proxy, you won't see this problem. If with HTTP2 all the way to the back end, you won't see this problem. So that's what I missed and I wanted to talk about here. So that's in a nutshell this uh the smuggling http request smuggling attack it's a bad attack so it has been fixed with i think node.js 13.8 and 12 version i don't know which version exactly but 12 10 is affected i don't think there is an 11 version but 9 i don't believe 8 oh, 8x is updated but this is this is really uh an important security uh patch i I really uh, suggest you guys update it, especially in the production system, right? Go ahead and update that. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. A uh, little bit of change in this software news uh, show. I want to I wanna experiment with that thing. And let's say, uh, until I get a decent camera, you're going to see my awful face right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, I rather give you a decent audio than... Uh, the better visuals so that's essentially what i'm gonna do for the coming few videos until i get a decent camera where, you, where there will be a nice sitting and all that jazz all right guys if you like this video give it a like and i'm gonna see you on the next one you guys stay awesome